you tell me when to start i'll start yeah i will hand over the session to you then you start presenting okay okay, okay. yeah Hi and hello everyone. Yeah, warm good evening to all. I am Partha from the Biomix. I would like to welcome you all for today's session. The speaker of today's webinar is Dr. Dipesh Shetta, and he will be delivering his talk on impact of pigment cells on neurodegeneration. On behalf of the Biomix team, I would like to welcome my eminent resource person, Dr. Dipesh Shetta. Our speaker is an eminent scholar in the area of neurosciences, and both I believe that he would be nourishing you all through this talk. in this webinar at this juncture i would like to thank professor dr dibash stata for accepting my invitation and taking the time out of his busy schedule to join with us to this webinar it's a highly honor and privilege for our biomix team in hosting this webinar with our eminent resource person and i also appreciate and welcome all the participants of today's webinar who joined with us now it's my pleasure in taking the credit of introducing our speaker dr dibash stata Dr. Dibash Jatta is currently working as a research scientist in the Department of Neurological Sciences in Rush University Medical Center at Chicago, USA. Dr. Dibash Jatta obtained his PhD in biochemistry from CSIR Indian Institute of Chemical Biology. He did his master's in MSc in Bio- microbiology from Calcutta University. He is expert in cell skills such as creating animal models of Parkinson's diseases. Chupati and Artinsted's disease, toxic induced and transitory, small animal brain surgery, stereo taxi, stereology, neural counting, behavioral experiments, motor behavior and memory test using nodule nodules, immunohisto chemistry and so forth and so on. He is a recipient of several awards such as Outstanding Receiver Award, a uh, Reviewer Award from Journal of Chemistry. Neuro Anatomy and 2018 AMA PRA Category One credit for reviewing journal article from Leaping Court Continuing Medical Education Institute in 2018 and 2019 Post Doctor Fellow in Doctor Kalipanda Pahans Laboratory Rush University Medical Center in 2016 Best Forum Presentation in Young Investigator Forum in Neurosciences. Neuro Update India in 2014 Best Oral Presentation in Cell Biology and Physiology Meeting at CSIR Institute of Indian Institute of Chemical Biology India in 2012 Best Poster Award in Neuroscience in Society of Biological Chemistry India in 2012 CSIR UGC NET uh, JRF in 2008 and UGC JRF in 2000 Conducted by UGC CSIR Government of India. With this brief intro, I would welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Dibash Shetta, to deliver a talk on the impact of immune cells on neurodegeneration. Before this, kind attention to the participants, dear participants. You have question and answer session at this end of the presentation. You are supposed to place your questions in the chat box. Myself, you have to put your queries to our guest speaker during question and answer session. Now we hand over the session to our speaker, Dr. Dibash Shetta. Sir, please. Yeah, hi, Parthu, and thanks for having me here. And it was such a kind and nice introduction oh. for me. And it is li- uh, really a pleasure to uh, discuss about little bit of the science or the research that we are doing here, and we have been doing for a long time now. and i would uh, i like that it will add some value to the current researchers or to the students who are working in this particular field and with that i would like to uh, so uh, i am not giving any more introduction about myself because partho has already told it in in very details so i would like to uh, share the slides uh, partho can i yeah sure sir yeah so uh, as all of you know that uh, the topic of today's uh, presentation is like impact of the immune cells on neurodegeneration now um 
um, what happens in case of the neurodegeneration? I am coming like uh, like slide after slides. Uh, so uh, the first thing is that we need to understand uh, like what is neurodegeneration. So a neurodegeneration when it happens, it causes like the progressive atrophy of the brain. The brain size reduces as well as uh, it is caused by a specific loss of certain neurons maybe in certain localized area of the brain uh, at the initial phase and which progressively uh, spreads throughout the brain with aging and which results in the total atrophy of the brain and loss of function of and uh, it might be like sporadic where the etiology is still unknown it can be caused by different multiple factors whether molecular factors aging related factors environmental factors and uh, some of the times in few of the cases or for particular diseases it is familiar so by familiar what i mean that uh, it is caused by mutations or loss of function of certain genes as you see, this is the brain. This is the diagram of a human brain, and it shows the certain areas. But in particular diseases, one or two or some of the specific areas are particularly or specifically affected. Like in case of Parkinson's disease, uh, which is the uh, second most uh, prevalent neurodegenerative disorder, and everyone so today's uh, my talk is like impact of immune cells on neurodegeneration and uh, before going to the part of the immune cells and their effect in the neuronal health and how they promote the neurodegeneration we first need to know uh, some basics of the, the neurodegeneration so what happens that uh, a class of neurons or uh, a particular areas neurons are lost uh, in a progressive manner in the brain and that uh, causes the specific loss of function of certain areas of the brain which is called the neurodegeneration and uh, it spreads uh, it might start from particular regions in the brain some some, uh, some localized regions but it progressively as the disease progresses the pathology of the disease also progresses or the loss of neurons also progresses within the brain with time and uh, if we see the etiology like it can be sporadic where the etiology is still unknown there might be multiple factors aging related factors environmental factors the molecular factors are responsible and uh, on the other hand there might be the reason might be familial where the certain gene mutations are responsible uh, for onset of the disease now if we see this diagram it uh, lists some of the common neurodegenerative diseases like parkinson's disease alzheimer's disease huntington's 
uh, FTD, ALS, and spinal cerebellar ataxia, etc. So in all these diseases, some of the many of the times that uh, the affected regions of the brain overlap with each other, and sometimes uh, in case of like Parkinson's and atypical Parkinson's. becomes difficult to differentiate within the diseases, but they have some some sort of specific regions also which is specific to uh, some uh, diseases like parking in ca case of PD, uh, the mainly the basal ganglia, the brain stem, olfactory lobes, those are the mainly affected regions and also cause, um, mainly caused by the uh, loss of the uh, substantia nigra uh, dopaminergic neurons. In case of Alzheimer's disease, we have the a loss of function of the hippocampus and the cortex area. So, uh, uh, in case of spinal cerebellar ataxia, the cerebellum and the uh, part of the uh, spinal cord is lost or is uh, the function of those portions are lost uh, causing the balance uh, problems and the movement problems. So, uh, these are the like cumulatively makes a list of the neurodegenerative diseases and uh, there might be multiple reasons uh, for the onset of the disease and we are going to discuss here how the inflammation and the adaptive immune system causing uh, or contributing to the onset or the progression of this disease. And uh, if we see the neurodegeneration, uh, many of the times the, the diseases are linked with the mutation or the loss of functional or aggregation of certain proteins. So, uh, which uh, makes it to call like proteinopathies also happen and one of the primary reasons behind the onset of the disease. Like in case of Alzheimer's disease, we have A, beta and tau and uh, mainly these proteins are uh, found to be mutated or uh, loss of function happens or abnormal aggregation happens specifically in the hippocampus, in the cortex regions. Whereas in case of Parkinson's disease, we have alpha synuclein and also in different alpha synucleinopathies, there's a cluster of many diseases where this protein is found to be uh, abnormally aggregated or inclusion body have in, in maximum of these proteins are mainly uh, the, or the protein abnormalities mainly start from the neuronal part. So, when neuronal deregulation happens, the neurons cannot take care of the overload of this protein. So, what happens in the neuronal system, the, there will be the, the machineries which take care of the ex, extra proteins or the aggregated proteins, they become itself compromised. Like the, there will be unfolded protein response, there will be a lot of stress response, the autophagy pathway might not work. So, these aggregated proteins might be exocytose from the neurons and get distributed to the other regions. And this distributor, uh, when this uh, protein spreads from one brain region to another brain region, there comes the function of the glial cells. We have the microglia as well as the astroglia, which direct, which are directly involved uh, in this uh, proteinopathies also. And when microglia or astroglia, they cannot also uh, clear up this uh, aggregated protein. So, what happens is that their phase also changes from a resting phase or a, from a good phase, they become in a bad phase. So, bad phase I mean to be, uh, I mean to say that they become more inflamed and they start, start uh, secreting some of the cytokines of the factors which are not good for the brain health, not good for the neuronal health and that condition actually is called uh, neuroinflammation and gradually it also involves the interference of uh, adaptive immunity like the peripheral immune system cells getting into the brain and making or worsening the disease conditions. So we are coming one after that, uh, one after another. So uh, first thing is that if you see the inflammation in the brain inflammation or the neuroinflammation part, we have the primary immune response system which is the innate immune response system in the brain is the microglia. Cells in the CNS. And uh, so normally it is involved in several good things like it is re required for proper brain development, proper 
neuronal dendrophytogenesis as well as uh, dendritic pruning and many other purposes. But when it is activated for certain stimuli or if some infection happens or neuronal death happens, it might be activated to different, two different, mainly two different phenotypes, which is called the M1 phenotype as well as the M2 phenotype. So the M1 phenotype is mainly pro-inflammatory in nature, whereas the M2 phenotype is more of a growth promoting and anti-inflammatory in phenotype. And uh, so when, um, and it is the only cells in the brain which can phagocytose, as I said, it can phagocytose any um, extracellular bodies like apoptotic bodies, pathogens, protein aggregates, synapses, and uh, when it does it, it uh, does it by a sequential manner. So it has some receptors which can bind those uh, extracellular debris or particles. This is called uh, a find me signal by uh, after uh, getting this find me signal and then it eats that particular uh, debris or the extracellular particle by phagocytosing and then it digests it within it, uh, within its cell. But when this procedure does not go very well, uh, generally happens in a chronic condition or a chronic stress or chronic diseases, then this microglia or microglia also loses this uh, particular phenotype and becomes more inflammatory towards the M1 phenotype and starts releasing some of the uh, inflammatory molecules in the brain. So this is the primary immune system that we have in the brain and uh, a cons uh, uh, constituting to a neuroinflammation and we have a secondary who can uh, contribute to the neuroinflammation and how it is causing the coming after it. So, as I said, in generally in a normal conditions, uh, there is always a neuron microglia crosstalk happens in the normal resting brain. And in a normal brain, maximum of the neuro, uh, microglia stays, uh, stay in a resting stage. And uh, for keeping it in a resting stage, neurons also play a great role by synthesizing some of the fractal kinds like CX3, CR1, CD47, CD200. These are the factors which uh, make contacts with the microglia and make microglia in a more of the inactive or resting stage or uh, in a normal stage so that it cannot uh, act in a, in a different way and when it is activated if it is activated to the m2 microglia specific um, uh, manner and uh, so generally when it is activated it can be activated to the m2 as well as m1 but there is a balance there must be a balance in between these two phenotypes and uh, in reality, in chronic diseases, what happens is there is a loss of balance in this uh, M1 to M2 switching. And uh, the, as I said earlier, that M2 phenotype uh, is mainly growth promoting. So you can see that uh, they have signature cytokines like IL-10, IL-13, TGF beta. Those are kind of growth promoting or tissue repairing uh, kind of cytokines. These have a great role in tissue repairing. Whereas on the left hand side, we have the, all the pro-inflammatory things like uh, if the pro-inflammatory for the uh, starting of the pro-inflammatory pathways generally start from the binding of those debris or the extracellular particles to certain uh, cell membrane receptors like And these receptors can uh, activate the nf kappa b pathway within the microglia. When the nf kappa b pathway is activated, it actually stimulates the expression of several pro-inflammatory genes, which uh, cumulatively increases the expression of the um, different cytokines like TNF alpha IL1 beta, as well as some oxidative markers by uh, inducing the expression of INOS and uh, all together they can mediate the neuronal apoptosis in a long way. And fi finally, these secreted molecules often leads to the astrocytic activation, which also plays a great role in uh, worsening the disease conditions. 
So what happens that you, there is always a my astrocyte is the second phase of uh, have astrocytic activation happens in the second phase, followed by the microglial activation. So when microglia is activated and starts secreting some of the pro-inflammatory cytokines, these factors can also stimulate the resting um, astrocytes and make them towards more of the A1 like the predominant inflammatory astrocytes. And together, they can secrete some of the molecules and some uh, create a lot of oxidative stress, which finally res is responsible for the death of the neurons. They have less tissue repairing or the phagocytosing property, but they release some of these toxic molecules of the mediators, which finally cause the loss of neurons. And this is the kind of neuroinflammation induced neurodegeneration happens in many of the diseases like PD or AD, etc. But on the other hand, what these two activated cells can do or the secreted cytokines from these activated cells can do is that they can compromise the blood brain barrier and uh, through or macrophages and several kind of T cells gets infiltrated within the brain parenchyma, which does not happen in the normal case, but under chronic disease condition, it starts happening. Now, there is a, always a role of T cells, like this is the uh, point where the T cells or the adaptive immunity is coming into the play of neuroinflammation. Now, we know that T lymphocytes are actually can be of two major categories, whether uh, T helper cells and cytotoxic T cells. And T helper cells is further like total four or five categories are there. TH1, TH17, TH2, TH, etc. And depending on the disease context, the researchers have found upregulation or downregulation or more infiltration of particular types of uh, T cells within the brain. And that all depends upon the disease context, like whether it is in PD or AD, sometimes the, the same kind of T-cells are also found in multiple diseases within the brain. But how they actually uh, affect the neuroinflammation is that, I, as I said before, the microglial activation stage is always should be in a equilibrium that there should be a balance between the M1 state and the M2 state of microglia. Depending upon the presence of different T cells, this balance might be altered or might be uh, like, uh, might be altered. So what happens like, uh, you can see here that the T reg cells, that regulated T cells favor more of the presence of or switching of the M1 to M2 microglia by secreting factors like TGF beta, whereas TH1 and TH17 cells, they favor formation of more of the inflammatory M1 microglia by their signature cytokines like IFN gamma or IL-17. The prevalence, uh, there will be more inflammatory cytokines, which might be bad for the existing neurons in the brain. So, this is the way how uh, T cells in the brain or presence of the T cells can actually affect or influence the brain's neuroinflammation under disease conditions. Now, <clears throat> obviously, when T cell infiltration happens, there is always a guard between a brain and the blood vessels. So that guard is the blood brain barrier. Generally, the T cells are always kind of swimming within the blood and they tether at certain points to the blood, uh, to the endothelial membranes uh, via interaction of certain selectin molecules and certain integrins. But when this is in the immune surveillance in a normal condition, this one happens. But on the right hand side, uh, as we saw in the, in the what, what happens in case of the inflammation, or in the inflammatory vein, that microglia and astroglia produce cytokines actually help to, uh, sorry, help to increase the expression of several these molecules like ICAMPs on the blood vessels. 
as well as there will be a loss of the astrocytic feeds on the blood vessels or the at the uh, blood brain barrier and which help in transcellular expo, uh, transport of the you know, of the t cells or the blood circulating macrophages from the blood vessels to the brain parenchyma and that happens when there is a prolonged inflammation in the brain so as you can see the blood brain barrier is actually composed of the tight junctions and surrounding those uh, uh, endothelial cells there are some smooth muscles Uh, these are the uh, exercise play a great role in uh, restricting the movement of the uh, components from the blood into the parenchyma and this way the blood brain barrier is made and uh, among the tight junction proteins we have claudine occludin and cadherins etc but when disease under disease condition what happens some of the key important blood brain barrier proteins like lrp1 p glycoprotein those are getting diminished whereas proteins like rage get upregulated this is the scenario what is found in case of alzheimer's brain and that leads to the less clearance of a beta from the brain which is the pathological protein found in the uh, alzheimer's disease now this is a kind of hypothetical jack model what it says that under uh, when a normal brain conditions or uh, under mild co cognitive impairment conditions these brains actually the blood brain barrier the uh, compromising the blood brain barrier or dysfunction of the blood brain barrier happens very late at a very aged stage whereas in the presence of pathological proteins like tau or amyloid beta or are actually in case of the um, alzheimer's patients this uh, the the onset of the dysregulation of the blood brain blood brain barrier happens much faster and that actually well correlated with the disease progression and down you can see also like in, this is a pd brain this is a normal brain and this is a pd brain like parkinson's disease brain stained with some of the uh gfp which is a astrocyte marker as well as lamin alpha 5 which is a blood brain barrier marker and in the control brain this stains very thick like you can see the blood brain barrier is very thick and very intact whereas in caused uh induced by uh ingestion of mptp which is a parkinsonian neurotoxin this thickness is totally gone which means the integrity of the blood brain barrier is lost so that is the scenario which happens prior to the t cell infiltration or macrophage or monocyte infiltration from the blood into the brain parenchyma now after this point we are going to discuss the uh, impact of the immune cells and how it hampers the disease conditions in case of the parkinson's disease now as you all know that parkinson's disease is caused by the specific loss of the a9 dopaminergic neuron so these neurons are mainly producing dopamine as the neurotransmitter and they are present in the substantia nigra pars compacta region of the midbrain when loss of these neurons happens they result in loss of its main neurotransmitter like dopamine as well as is uh, metabolized like dopac and hba in the striatum region Uh, of the forebrain so what happens that these neurons are sending their terminals towards the striatum and when this pathway is lost there will be a lack of dopamine in the striatum and lack of dopamine uh, results in lack of motor more uh, lack of motor coordination lack of movement and that's why it is a movement disorder and one of the pathological form, uh, hallmark of this disease is the formation of the lew bodies now these inclusion bodies which are primarily found in the neurons in case of parkinson's disease is actually made of the protein alpha synuclein which we have discussed earlier also and along with 70 or more than that other proteins like accumulated together and they become very toxic and cause the cell death or neuronal death in the context of these diseases
Now, if you see, we have tremor, rigidity, uh, like the stiffness of the limbs, echinacea, like inhibition of the initiation of movement, and postural inst instability. And, and the diagram here shows that how typically a Parkinson presents or the posture of the Parkinson's, uh, Parkinson's patient look like. And all together they form a trap phenotype. Now in the human brain, this is a diagram of the midbrain portion of the human healthy substantia nigra. Um, and there is a neuromelanin containing uh, dopaminergic neurons. Uh, in the normal brain when in PD cases these neurons are specifically lost as you can see there is a less uh, intense stain of this uh, neuromelanin containing neurons and we when we do experiments on this mod uh, on this disease in the laboratory what we make we make different uh, experimental models of the disease and uh, some of the mouse models is one of the most uh, handy and one of the high, hugely used uh, models worldwide for these diseases. And uh, uh, so, in, this is a section called the uh, uh, called the, the midbrain section of the healthy or normal mouse brain, where the this is a staining for tyrosine hydroxylase, which is the marker of the dopaminergic neurons, and this is the end. As I said in the terminal, like the striatum, the normal dopamine level exists in this brain. Whereas in a Parkinsonian brain, if we treat these brains with um, animals with MPTP or some kind of toxins, what happens? There is a loss of these neurons, which also uh, and that results in the loss of the reduced dopamine at the terminal. So in this way, the Parkinson's models are being created in the lab for experiment. As I said here, the MPTP, which is a mitochondrial toxin, its metabolite is MPP plus and it um, can be used to create acute models or chronic models depending on the dose. We have rotenon also, which is a xenobiotic but less used nowadays. It is also a micro mitochondrial complex one in inhibitor. 6 OSDA is a uh, on the, is used to create um, oxidative stress in the brain and auto-oxidation of dopamine itself can cause the demise of these neurons. Apart from this toxin-induced model, we have several genetic models. Uh, some of these do recapitulate some of the features of Parkinson's disease. Some of these do not, but still being used for experimental parts, purpose. We have the mutant alpha-synuclein expressing mice, pink one knockout mice or apachia mice. But one of the most uh, like more trendy uh, in the recent uh, current research is the sporadic model of Parkinson's disease, which is created by in injection of fibrillar alpha-synuclein. As I said, the alpha-synuclein is the hallmark or aggregation of alpha-synuclein is the hallmark of this disease. And this is created by injection of fibrillar, uh, fibrillar form of the alpha-synuclein stereotactically in the forebrain striatum region and often with time it recapitulates or it uh, uh, causes demise of the nigral dopaminergic neurons and this way the sporadic model is created and it recapitulates major features of the disease. Now in all these uh, formats like in different disease models in human brains, in, in, in mouse brains, the first report about the involvement of T cells or the adaptive immunity in the disease of Parkinson's disease or uh, Parkinson's brain came first in the 2009 of clinical investigation, where the researchers have seen the presence of CD4 plus as well as CD8 plus cells in the brain of Parkinson's patients. If this is uh, figure constitutes the Niagara from the Niagara region, substantial Niagara region of the brain of PD patients. And you can see the clear presence uh, of the CD4 positive cells as well as CD8 positive cells. And uh, 
uh, followed by that when they try to uh, see the same thing in the mouse brain this is a mptp uh, induced mouse brain they found a similar presence of the cd3 positive t cells uh, in the niagara region and uh, ultimately they wanted to see like what kind of uh, like if we nullify the um, if in the absence of t cell receptors or cd8 or cd uh, cd4 minus uh, conditions in this transgenic mice whether they are still susceptible to mptp or not so as you see that wild type mouse is very much susceptible to mptp in cd8 minus cells they are they are also equally susceptible to mptp but in case of cd4 minus uh, mice uh, cd4 minus transgenic mice they are not that susceptible to mptp what that means that maybe for uh, causing the neuronal death in case of pd maybe cd4 positive t cells are more involved so therefore they got redu reduction of the number of uh, dopaminergic neurons in both wild type as well as cd8 minus uh, 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 minus mice but that was kind of given is that effect or kind of vanished in case of tcr beta as well as cd4 minus mice so in case of, uh, in the absence of uh, active cd4 positive cells the dopaminergic neuronal uh, demise is not happening in this mice suggesting that cd4 plus t cells have more involvement in mediating dopaminergic neuronal death in pd after that the next year another study came which addressed this issue even in a better way and what they have shown is that uh their experimental paradigm was like that that they have in a normal mice they have injected nitrated alpha synuclein so against this pathological protein whatever adaptive immune cells were created like the t, t cells they have collected the cd4 positive t cells from this mice and those mice were in vitro transformed into different or enriched into different populations like th1 th2 and th17 these three different populations of t cells cd4 positive th cells and then these cells were injected into the recipient mice and followed by injection with mptp to show that after mptp injection which particular t cells is it th1 th2 or th17 which does have more effect on dopaminergic neuronal survival or the loss of dopaminergic neurons and what they have found that not in other categories of t cells but ti17 cells those mice receiving ti17 followed by the mptp injection they have maximum loss of the nigral da neurons dopaminergic neurons as well as the there is always uh, there the, the striatum neural fiber is almost lost in those neurons even this is much significant thing that the extra presence of the ta17 uh, cells within these mice is actually potentiating the effect of mptp and similarly they have found that in those particular mice with the mice which is receiving the ta17 uh, cells there is a higher generation of the gliosis microgliosis in the niagara whereas if those animals are treated with a vasoactive uh, uh, peptide which is actually a peptide that favors the formation of t regu regulatory cells in the body the, the effect of ta17 cells is almost gone or significantly down regulated suggesting that the tsl t regulatory cells does have the efficacy to inhibit the uh, worsening effect of ta17 on dopaminergic cells next when our laboratory started uh, 
examining these facts we started in the monkey model the primate model of the pd and uh, so this model was created by one, the single intracarotid injection of mptp into the right hemisphere of the brain uh, in both the hemispheres of the brain and after 37 days of the mptp injection they have collected the serum and to see that what are the different chemokines or cytokines are actually activated or upregulated in the uh, serum of these animals which might be responsible, which might be driving more of the T-cell infiltration within the brain. And they have found that there are two specific cytokines which are upregulated much higher than any other cytokines which is called the Rantis, also called CCL5 and Eotaxin like CCL2. And that after MPTP injection, there's a lot of T cells around the blood vessels, uh, confirming that within the blood uh, within the brain there is an invasion of the T cells from the outside, and this is the magnified view. Next, they also wanted to see that in Parkinson's cases, if there is an upregulation of uh, uh, cytokines like Rantis or Eotaxin, how it is getting upregulated and they have found that this upregulation in the microglial cells primarily they have seen that this is upregulated by the act function of NF-kappa B activation. And as it is uh, upregulated by NF-kappa B activation, so they have used one peptide which is named as a nemo binding peptide and its function is to block the activation of the nf kappa b and uh, when this uh, peptide is, is administered uh, start after mptp injection what happens that uh, the the phosphorylated i kappa b kinase is must much down regulated and as this nf kappa b activation is lowered by the this peptide the rantis and eotaxin expression is also lowered within the brain so suggesting that the inhibition of nf kappa b decreases the rantis expression within the brain now in the next phase we have so far found that rantis and eotaxin are some of the cytokines which are responsible uh, for infiltration of the T cells from the periphery within the brain and this work but next uh, they seek to uh, know that whether these cytokines are responsible for progressive neuronal demise or not because the, uh, the cell death or the neuronal death happens progressively and irreversibly so after one day of the injection of MPTP, up to the third day of MPTP injection, there is a higher level of uh, Rantis as well as e e Eotaxin. But, but seven days onwards, this level goes down and after 30 or 60 days, it becomes almost normal. So, and along, uh, along with that, after one day only, they have found that it's much upregulated microgliosis as well as the astroglasses within the brain and only after one day of mptp ingestion there is also higher level of the t cells coming within the brain which is must much reduced after seven days of the mptp injection and this study was conducted in the mice so they found that the effect of mptp is actually happening very acutely and t cell uh, infiltration or the glial activation is also happening much acutely within the brain like from one day to third day post the toxin injection so for that purpose they but that does not recapitulate the exact parkinson's disease because in parkinson's disease what happens the neurons uh, die with it uh, uh, slowly but progressively and there is no comeback so what they have done uh, that in the next phase of the experiment, after MPTP injection, after three days of MPTP injection, they kept the mice up to 60 days and after three days, 
every week, twice in a week, there was an interperitoneal ingestion of these uh, cytokines like rantis and eotaxin. Why? Because they needed to see that why extra extra rantis or eotaxin supplementation from outside can it make the neuronal death in a pro continuously infiltrate the T cells from the outside within the brain. And what they have found that when the rantis and eotaxin is supplemented from outside. Even after 30 days or 60 days, there is a continuous glial activation within the brain. As revealed by the QPCR of different pro-inflammatory molecules as well as the Western blot analysis, like INOS, IL-1, beta, GFAP and IBA-1, these are all the glial markers. And by immunostaining also, like in MPTP, after one day, there is a lot of gliosis happening within the brain, but after seven days, it is coming down. But those mice which are getting continuous uh, rantis and eotaxin supplementation from outside, they still have that much of gliosis, presence of gliosis even after 30 days or 60 days of MPTP ingestion. And that, why this is happening? Because if after rantis or eotaxin uh, supplementation along with MPTP for prolonged days, there is continuous infiltration happening. In the last file, you see that in seven days, the infiltration is, uh, or in 30 days, the infiltration, there is almost no presence of the T cells within the brain. But when rantis and eotaxins are supplemented from outside, there is still a lot of T cells within the brain. And not only that, these T cells are actually making contact with the microglia in the brain. And there's a positive correlation we found in the microglial size as well as the CD4 number, CD4 positive cells. So more is the CD4 uh, cells in the brain, the microglial activation is also more. And that results in the progressive demise, what happens in the normal humans or in the primates brain. Uh, that after rantis and eotaxin supplementation, there is a progressive demise. Normal cases that after 30 days of MPTP ingestion, these neurons are coming almost back to the normal control brain. But when the rantis and neotaxin is supplemented from outside, these are the neurons are not coming back. Means is that they are permanently kind of dead, which more uh, which recapitulates the disease phenotype in a, in a much better way, and that also. Uh, clears that the progressive neural demise by rantis and eotaxin supplementation is also dependent on the T cell infiltration. Now, up to this point, we are kind of sure that ranti, uh, that chemokines like rantis or eotaxin they can recruit the T cells from the outside within the brain. But we were not sure that which particular type of cells are actually brought into the brain. Is it TH1, TH17 or a mixture of both or what kind of TH cells are getting within the brain. So for that purpose, we took the advantage of the immunodeficient RAG1 knockout mice. So the RAG1 knockout mice does not have any mature lymphocytes. So obviously they are less susceptible to Parkinsonian neurotoxins like MPTP. When wild-type mice does have more than 50 or 40 percent neuronal death, RAG1 knockout mice only have 20 to 30 percent neuronal death. So we took advantage of these mice because these mice do not have any active T cells or the T lymphocytes within their body. So we adoptively transferred some T cells from outside. Uh, so why from these T cells are coming? Initially, we took T cells from the spleen of tomato red mice and in vitro polarize them to either TH1, TH17 and T rec phenotype. We enriched these cells outside in vitro and then separate of RAG1 knockout mice. And after one day of T cell treatment, these mice received the MPTP injection and were kept for seven days. So within that time, 
they receive two more doses of rantis this will show us that with rantis treatment what kind of t cells are actually or specifically recruited within the brain is it th1 th17 and or tdf and what we found not th1 neither uh, neither th1 nor th uh, tdf but only th17 population is particularly recruited after ranti supplementation within the niagara within the brain parenchyma and therefore the number of cd4 positive t cells within the brain also increased in mice receiving both mptp as well as rantis compared to only mptp treated animal and this up regulation of this higher number of the t cells in these mice also negatively correlated with the loss of th neurons so more the number of t cells within the brain t th17 cells the less number of dopaminergic neurons we found in the niagara which firmly confirms that ranti specifically th17 uh, recruits uh, th17 cells in the brain in the parkinsonian mice and that results in progressive loss of the neurons in niagara so this study whatever we have done so far in the last three studies about rantis or eotaxin were mainly con uh, conducted in the animals animal models of parkinson's disease is it uh, maybe in the monkey or uh, in mice models of uh, pd but let as well as your uh, rantis and the ta17 cytokine il17 in the human patients where we can see that there is a positive correlation between rantis level and il17 level in pd serum the rantis level is much higher than the control as well as the il17 level is much higher than the control patients and both these levels are actually positively correlated with each other in the human pt serum and our this finding is also uh, supported or shown by some other uh, findings who have shown by um, facts analysis from the t cells within the brain that increase ta17 level in the blood of de novo pt pt patients de novo means early onset pt pt patients who have uh, just diagnosed diagnosed and not received any kind of drugs so in those patients also they found higher level of ta17 or ta17 specific cytokines in the serum of the blood and these are some other um, reports which uh, firmly shows that there are involvement of ta17 in the parkinson's disease and there is the upregulation of the ta17 in the parkinson's disease patients now as we know that ta17 cells might be involved in the dopaminergic neural demise in parkinson's and uh, um, in other things but the question still remains that okay that's the ta17 how is it conferring cell death how is it conferring neuronal death so this study has found that ta17 cells actually directly interact with the ventral midbrain dopaminergic neurons via lfa1 and icam interaction so the ta17 cells can express both lfa so these are the integrin molecules so ta17 cells can in uh, express both lfa1 as well as icam1 but dopaminergic neuron lfa1 of ta17 and I icam1 of the neurons makes connections or attached like here is a time lapse uh, confocal imaging has shown that there is a increase binding of ta17 cells in culture of the primary neuron culture and that mediates the cell death and how it is being conferred because when uh, when this co culture is made with ta17 with the ventral mid, uh, midbrain primary neurons there is a loss of neurons happening but this loss of neurons can be blocked if we treat those neurons with anti lfa1 antibodies 
suggesting that when this LFA1 and IKM1 interaction is blocked by the antibodies, the neuronal death is not happening. So this is one pathway by which PA17 cells are conferring neuronal death. And there is another pathway by which PA17 cells can might cause the neural death, which is by the IL-17 pathway. So the neurons express IL-17 receptor and the PA17 cells express the uh, or secret IL-17. And when there is an IL-17, IL-17 R signaling, there will be an activation of the NF-kappa V. And within neurons, the activation of NF-kappa V might result in the uh, apoptosis. And this is a paper in cell report which has shown that how the apoptosis happens in the presence or when that this particular signaling is activated in the brain. Now we are coming little bit to the alpha synucleinopathy. Now this heterogeneous group of disorders like, like Parkinson's disease is also one kind of alpha synucleinopathy because in that disease the inclusion body of uh, alpha synucleinopathy is found in several brain regi regions. But apart from that, there are two major alpha synucleinopathies also, which is called the Lugardi dementia and the multiple system. Neurons are get affected by all the these inclusion bodies are found only in the neurons. Why does in MSA, like in multiple system atrophy, the inclusion bodies are primarily found in the oligodendrocytes, which is the main cells in the brain which makes myelin sheet and secondarily found in neurons in the later phase of the disease. So this is, the, this is called the LB pathology, that the, like the Liu body pathology, which, which is found in the neurons of the ventral midbrain. Uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is pictures of, from the mouse brain, as well as the human brain, which is even much cleaner. Whereas the GCI pathology, like the glial cytoplasmic inclusion pathology, is found only in the uh, oligodendrocytes. This is from the striatum and also in the human brain striatum. This is in the mouse, this is in the human. And these diseases, for sure they cause uh, new neuronal loss, loss of function, loss of neural activities uh, chronically, like progressively. And But the most important thing is that in the recent research, uh, researchers are showing that in these diseases also, there is a T cell involvement in uh, uh, progressing the disease pathology in the brain. So this study first showed that LBD, like the Liu body dementia uh, patient brain, from in the Liu body dementia patient brain, there is a existence of CD3 plus as well as CD4 plus T cells in the cortex cortex region of the brain, and these are positively correlated with each other. Now we know that the whole T cells can be CD3 positive. Uh, um, the, all the T cells are CD3 positive and uh, out of the, those CD3 positive cells, some are CD4 positive, which is the uh, T, T cells. But in the disease context, they found only specific recruitment of CD4 plus T cells, not the CD8 cytotoxic T cells. And along with the human um, record, they have also uh, conducted this study in the alpha synuclein expressing transgenic mouse model. And there also they have found in the multiple brain regions like neocortex, hippocampus means these are the regions which is found to be affected in LBD, striatum as well as thalamus. But thalamus they have taken as a negative control because this region is not found to be that much affected in LBD. But in other regions there is a specific like very highly uh, recruitment of uh, CD3 as well as CD4 positive cells are happening within this region, specifically in the hippocampus as well as the striatum. Now, um, but same, similarly in CD20 and CD8, there is not much of change found in the um, diseased animals. But more importantly, what they have found that the, these cells are not only recruited within the brain, 
but they are also making physical contact with the existing glial cells within the brain. So these are from the different, again from the different brain regions like hippocampus and striatum and there they have found that the interaction between the glial processes and the T cells are happening only under the disease conditions. Those are not found in the control mice, but in the alpha synuclein overexpressing mice, these are the physical interaction between astrocytes and the CD4 positive T cells or the micro IV1 positive microglia and the CD4 positive T cells are happening under the disease conditions. Similarly, the T cell infiltration is also found in the MSA brain, like multiple system atrophy. As I said, that in multiple system atrophy, oligodendrocytes are the primary cells which are affected. Again, in the human patients of MSA, we found a much higher level of CD3 and CD4 positive T cells. But in this case, they have also found the involvement of CD8 positive T cells which the reason or the outcome or the reasons uh, are not still clear, but this is the fact which is found from the human brain. Now, based on it, these researchers have made a viral vector induced model, mouse model of the uh, MSA, where the, the, uh, the alpha synuclein gene is expressed under a oligodendrocyte specific promoter and that is in, uh, injected into the striatum of the mouse brain. And as you can see, when these mouse uh, actually age uh, after uh, uh, at, at least around one month, there is a higher expression or significant expression of the alpha synuclein happening in the glia of the striatum. So, and as these mice actually age more, there is a loss of the myelin sheath in the striatum region, which is much lower than the control or the vehicle treated mice. And when they have taken out the whole lymphocyte populations within the brain of the of this uh, virus in, in injected or the actual uh, MSM mod mouse models, and they have performed the uh, facts analysis from the whatever the T cell populations actually prevalent within the brain of these mice, what they have found in this case, contrary to other uh, our earlier uh, reports where we have seen that TH17 is mainly involved in the brain recruitment and the glial pathology and neuron loss. But in case of the MSA, they have found it is not the TH17s, rather the IF and gamma producing TH1 cells are more recruited in the diseased mice. And <clears throat> so this is the difference between the normal PD or LBD, like where the glial uh, inclusion body happens in the neurons and uh, from the MSA where the inclusion body happens in the oligodendrocyte. The basic reason that why in this case TH1 is more involved is still not clear, but that's the fact which is revealed by Williams et al. Uh, Williams and co-workers recently in this year. But and when we can specifically block the infiltration uh, of the TH1 cells by uh, monoclonal antibodies or the deletion of the TCRB, which is a T cell receptor protein, that in that case, the again, the glial pathology and the oligodendrocyte specific pathology is kind of diminished and uh, the normal is kind of uh, coming towards the control brain. So specifically, it shows that TH1 cells is mainly involved in the pathology of MSA. And so uh, coming to the conclusion of the whole research that has been done in the last five or 10 years and more is needed to know in this field. So the conclusion is that when there is some kind of insults, the neurotoxins or protein aggregates, etc., that result in activation of the glial cells. The microglasses happens, astroglasses happens, 
and when these uh, glial cells are more present in a more uh, inflammatory phenotype they secrete more of the cytokines and chemokines that help in infiltration of the T cells from the periphery into the brain. These infiltration of T cells which are mainly CD4 positive T cells we have found that uh, playing major role in the disease progression. So that can also act in a reverse way on the glial cells and make them more inflammatory by shifting the switching of the microbial phenotype from M2 to more of the M1 as well as when there will be more M1 there will be more A1 or the inflammatory astrocytes which is also controlled by the T cell infiltration and at the same time these infiltrating T cells can directly cause the neuronal demise by uh, binding to specific receptors on the neurons and when there will be more neurodegeneration this uh, neuron derived particles can again bind to the astrocytes or microglia further activating them making them more inflammatory and in that way this vicious cycle goes on and on and that's the one of the reasons that these diseases happen irreversibly in a progressive manner and there is still no drugs no absolute cure has come to the market so far at least in maximum of the neurodegenerative diseases so why do you stand in the therapeutic approach in pd so right now whatever the drugs are uh, available in the uh, society against pd or to uh, fight parkinson's disease so these are mainly somehow uh, like regulating or uh, like managing the dopamine catabolism or anabolism the dopamine metabolic part because dopamine is the main neurotransmitter secreted from this neuron so if we can replenish the first uh, gold standard drug that we have the L-DOPA the main theory is that it replace this is a precursor of dopamine so dopamine level is gone up and therefore uh, the symptoms get reduced or the PD symptoms but it only gives the symptomatic relief and to us 5 to end 10 years like for uh, prolonged intake can develop involuntary movements which is called dyskinesia. There are some other methods of uh, 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 of treatment like uh, reducing the dopamine cat catabolism. We know that Mao B and COMT these are the enzymes which are involved in dopamine degradation. However, drugs like selaginyl or acetylene they can uh, 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 they can stop the degradation and we have dopamine receptors uh, agonists also like uh, with the, in the absence of dopamine these receptors can activate the dopamine um, postsynaptic pathways and we have but all these two have several like side effects and often they are used in combination with L-DOPA which again is bad and shows deleterious effects in the long term and surgical strategies whatever is available there still now they are like invasive and uh, they are not cost effective as all, at all so um, right now so what we have now dealing with the parkinsonism we have typical atypical parkinsonism as well so can we treat this uh, disease with from the inflammatory basis like if we can uh, reduce the inflammation part can we uh, get new drugs to the market so coming to that point there are some new approaches to target the immune system in PD. And this has been recently introduced uh, in a paper uh, 
uh, where we have seen that specifically researchers are targeting rather than dopamine metabolism or catabolism they are targeting different other receptors like alpha synuclein this protein which is mainly involved in the progression of the pathology as well as glp1 receptor so that the neuroinflammation part in the brain can be reduced so that uh, the progressiveness can only be uh, can be reduced only if inflammatory part of the disease can be restricted or reduced and so there are some other promising approaches like uh, people are trying to increase the t reg population because t regulatory t cells can suppress the effect of the t17 cells in the body so gm csf the granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor is one of those material which can uh, increase the t reg population in the body and this is a phase 1 trial going on uh, for the supplementation of gm csf as a anti pd therapy as well as we have the vasoactive intestinal peptide which is again facilitates the neuro protection by increases the t reg population in the body so in our group we have also seen that meraviroc is a anti hiv drug but this is a antagonist of the ccr5 now ccr5 is the receptor of ccl5 that is the ranti so it inactivates or uh, it blocks the action of the rantis and we have seen in the paper of journal published in journal of immunology that meraviroc treatment in the mptp exposed primates can actually stop the disease progression as well as we have the monoclonal antibodies again came against chemokines like rantis or eotaxin which can also be effective but still to be checked in the uh, human populations and obviously not only for the medicines we have di different dietary supplements where which is which are rich in the polyphenols or the nutraceuticals like cinnamon and etc and they uh, individually have anti inflammatory effects which are have been shown from time to time in different in multiple uh, research uh, papers or articles and lastly but not the least we have the physical therapy which is being practiced nowadays is almost pd therapy or parkinson therapy uh, clinics because uh, and in reality we have seen that physical therapy regular physical therapy can actually down regulate the inflammation in the brain by suppression of the tlr2 and uh, other inflammatory markers reduce the microglia astroglia uh, activation in the brain and uh, by activating cert certain other transcription factors so all together these are the practices that needs to be uh, brought into the society Uh, so that we can get a better cure and um, we can uh, we can get a better cure for the disease and uh, so all together is also suggest that inflammation or the immunity purpose uh, immunity has a very significant role in mediating the cell death neurodegeneration so the existing strategies has to be changed so that the progressiveness of the disease can be lowered down or if it is not cured totally at least the onset of the disease or the progression of the disease can be much reduced by uh, targeting the inflammation part of the brain so with that uh, i would like to thank the biomix platform for uh, having me here and giving me the opportunity to present my some part of my research and this is my institute where we are conducting our research and i am also thankful to our group uh who are uh, giving continuous support to uh, carry on our research activities and also to the and also to the funding agencies like nih nih and the us veterans affairs so with that i would like to conclude my talk for today thank you yeah thank you so much sir yeah presentations uh, made many neurobiologists so inspired and uh, and uh, enthusiastic participants have inspired uh, by your uh, lecture series thank you so much uh, it proves that your knowledge passion is in the field of neurobiology uh, sir uh, today we had a vast number of participants throughout this webinar in spite of uh, technical issues what we had in, in our starting of the webinar and we have uh, questions from them uh now i will forward the questions one by one from a participants to you sir shall i yeah
सर द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज दैट सर कॉन्ट द एस्ट्रोसाइट्स कंट्रीब्यूट टू न्यूरो इंफ्लेमेशन विदाउट द इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ माइक्रोजियास इन एडी वेयर डू दे स्टैंड इंडिपेंडेंटली एज फॉर एस डिसीज पैथोलॉजी और ट्रीटमेंट इज कंसर्न yeah so there are neur- uh, neurons can also make contacts i uh, i don't deny that that is wrong because that is also correct the neurons uh, can directly contact with the astrocytes and when some of the toxic materials are coming out from the neurons as i said the some of the protein aggregates when they are coming from the brain parenchyma uh, 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 coming into the tissue space in the brain parenchyma they are also uptaken by astrocytes like um, as he or she said like in alzheimer's disease the a beta is also uptaken by astrocytes and if astrocytes cannot take care of those a beta part they can become more inflammatory in nature and also uh, mediate some inflammatory uh, results like activation like inflammatory cytokines and all but what i wanted to say that that astrocyte astrocytic inflammation gets more potentiated when they get uh, some more input from the microglia part so there obviously there is the astrocytic activation by making neuronal contact or by getting toxic proteins or some other factors from the neurons but that astrocytic activation gets more activated when microglial input is coming yeah the next question is that what are the types of training which can be done in selection of pd and normal animal models to compare the level of dopamines what is the normal uh, standard of and no and normal animal models to compare the level of dopamine so there are uh, multiple uh, models available but it all depends that uh, what kind of uh, what they want to have like if they want to have a acute model i think mptp ip injection mptp induced model is the best one which is practiced all over the world but if they want to have something which mimics the disease in a even better way like for not only uh, uh, not only at the molecular level but also uh, in the phenotype in the behavior and everything i think nowadays uh, in maximum of the labs even we are also doing the alpha synuclein injection within the forebrain of the mice nowadays rotenone or 6hda treatment is kind of less practiced or less used uh, but instead of that uh, fibrillar alpha synuclein injection in the forebrain and then uh, conducting your experiment over the next 3 4 months of time that makes better animal model for the sporadic case yeah the next question is that what is the dose of ld50 or lc50 value of mtpt used for the mouse model uh first of all i cannot say that ld50 or lb50 values because uh, the the dose that we have used uh for the making the mouse model which is a very established one it is 20 mg per kg four doses 2 hours apart in a single day so that is used like mostly used for the acute uh model yeah the next question is that how mtpt mouse is different from genetically induced mouse first of all mptp is a toxin so the effect will be very fast um genetically induced mice will they grow the pathology for prolonged time like 9 months 10 months the alpha synuclein over expressing mice they show their effect almost like uh, start showing their effects after 8 months although there will not be any th cell depletion or the dopamine depletion those you can get only after at around 15 months of uh, their age so it again depends upon what kind of uh, uh, what is your goal or the researcher's goal to mimic the disease pathology uh, like more to the human cases then they might use more of the chronic models 
in case of mptp or toxin induced models the acute uh, model actually works within 7 days if you want to have mptp induced chronic model maybe you can have uh, once or twice a dose in a uh, uh, in a week and that will be uh, like uh, continued for a month uh, for almost a month so uh, the effect of uh, the the dopaminergic cell loss and uh, the other behavior little bit behavioral effects will be more pronounced and faster in mptp induced mice but that will not recapitulate all the features and again in uh, alpha synuclein or this kind of uh, genetic model they might develop some of the features but that takes a lot of time like it have uh, like almost several several months but after that also they don't uh, uh, show the proper pd related pathologies all the time yeah the next question is that out of the several cytokinins how did researchers choose only ccl5 and ccl2 to study because those are the uh, cytokines that we have uh, got if you have seen the there is a box which was showing the density values of those this was a, this assay was called the ellipsot assay so we, they took the monkey serum samples and they put the serum samples on the uh on this chip which is having antibodies for these uh, different different uh, cytokines or, or chemokines i might say so out of all the chemokines they have maximum they got maximum upregulation of the mc of ccl5 and ccl2 in the parkinsonian uh, um, uh animals serum so that's why they have chosen those two yeah the next question is that what is the rate of therapeutic effect in case of mouse admin administered with mptp sorry i didn't understand what is the therapeutic the rate of therapeutic effort in case of mouse administered with mptp so generally the mptp is uh, used for the making a model i mean for Uh, using uh, for checking the therapeutic effects of other compounds you can have the acute mo- you can use the acute model as well as you can use the chronic model but again it uh, depends upon what kind of experiment or what is your goal to see for those it also depends upon the therapeutic molecules that you want to check in the animal model they ask what is the rate of therapeutic effect they ask the, the rate of therapeutic efforts in mptp mouse i mean this is uh, the rate of therapeutic effect i mean uh, uh, as i said the uh, uh, mptp is used only for making mouse models the rate means uh, i i i am not very sure about the question like what he actually wanted to ask okay sir. that pass on to the next question the next question is that t cells increases in brain due to inflammation increases t cells increases in brain due to hmm. the rantis and uh, as i showed the rantis and eotaxin expression they drive the t cells in the brain Uh, next question is that uh, what staining has been done to visualize the presence of brown colored leafy bodies in human or rodents brain, brain section oh those are kind of uh, double immuno staining uh, specific for the light microscopy so what happens like you can use the dab as well as the nickel sp- uh, uh, nickel specific staining at the same time because your primary antibodies are different so with the those brown colors they actually only for the dab staining diaminobenzene staining whereas the black one was actually for the nickel staining yeah the next question is that what about the b cell infiltration how it is involved in disease progression yeah uh, the first report that i showed they also they did not find much of the b cell infiltration first of all and the second report that i showed by renolds et al in uh, published in journal of 
immunology in 2010 the whether you change the b cell infiltration uh, you can block it or you can um, b cell infiltration does not play any role in in uh, neuronal uh, death or neurodegeneration The next question is that, in spite of all the progresses made in the field of Parkinson's disease, why do you think medication should not be improved yet? Still, patients are to survive on L-Dopo. Why? Yeah, that is the problem that uh, it is not um, uh, currently. I think if you have seen in the, uh, towards the last, towards the end of my uh, presentation, where several more uh, uh, several drugs are there which are like at present targeting molecules or tar targets or proteins which are not involved in dopamine catabolism or anabolism so right now whatever ildopa or etc drugs are available those are giving only symptomatic relief. but now people have started addressing other issues like the this idea of inflammation and adaptive immunity in Parkinson's disease or other immuno uh, diseases, uh, neurodegenerative diseases were actually not believed for 10 years from now. Now people have started understanding the mechanism how the T cells are actually affecting the neurodegeneration. And so the people are uh, coming up with uh, different kind of strategies or the molecules like this report I have shown, Rantis and Eurotaxin might be on one of the targets. Now I, I would also like to mention that sometimes people have used the non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, which are also anti-inflammatory in nature. But if any kind of drug which does not stop or which does not uh, address the T-cell infiltration within the brain, they might not be very good in stopping the progression of the Parkinson's disease. Because when there is a continuous T-cell infiltration, neuroinflammation is go, uh, will go on happening. It cannot be stopped. So that is one of the major reasons why uh, still and not a good drug has uh, or absolute cure has not come yet. Yeah. The next question is that what about histone deacetylation in neurodegeneration? Oh, it has multiple roles. First of all, uh, histone deacetylation uh, uh, activates or deactivates some of those like uh, as for example I can show from the neuroinflammatory side you know, I have shown that nf kappa b is one of the main regulator of the uh, uh, expression of inflammatory genes now nf kappa b is also acetylated or deacetylated and similarly the uh, transcription factor complexes in some of these genes can be deacetylated uh, where histones are there and they have multiple roles in that. Uh, uh, I think I have not personally done any research on that, but uh, it's already there in the literature. And I believe that that can be uh, another kind of target, all, although a little bit far-fetched. Yeah. The next question is that, uh, is there any way we can delay the chance of neurodegenerative diseases through our diet? or throughout through our lifestyle yeah yeah sure so as i mentioned in the to the end of my slide like even i have also written a uh, like uh, a, a review article on that like tea polyphenols the regular intake of black tea or green tea mm. that does have so many good stuff or the uh, uh, antioxidants in that that perhaps that might slow the onset of the this kind of neurodegenerative disease and not only for uh, uh, in case of Parkinson's disease but also all the other kind of dementias as well and similarly who, people who are just diagnosed uh, with um, uh, Parkinson's disease I have seen that some of the patients have also started taking the cinnamon powder or cinnamon extract now it has a lot of other metabolites into that like cinnamic acid sodium benzoate and uh, so these are the compounds which are also added as a fruit food flavoring components and they can be anti-inflammatory and they can re reduce the chance of the neurodegeneration if if this can be taken almost on a regular basis but according to following some standard protocols not like in an exaggerated amount 
and one more thing that i must mention that physical therapy regular exercise and people can find it in a um in the uh, literature so many papers in terms of pd as well as alzheimer's disease the regular exercise does activate so many transcription factors good for the uh, uh clearance of so many toxic proteins it can up regulate the autophagy pathway it can down regulate the inflammatory pathways so those are the some of the basic routines that people or the older age people also might can follow to get rid of this disease or to delay the pre onset of the disease yeah uh, thank you so much sir for your time and patience in listening and answering all our questions thank you for spending a valuable time with us i extend my sincere gratitude on behalf of my entire team of biopics thank you so much sir and i especially thank uh, for you for bearing with the technical issues uh, at the start of this webinar that's uh, okay. thank you so much <laughs> yeah okay so i hope i hope all participants are satisfied with the speaker's elaborate explanation and answering all your questions thank you so much uh i think everyone i thank everyone who joined with us through this webinar a uh, few announcements uh, for the participants uh you can set, download your certificates from our website uh, uh right uh, from the end of this webinar uh, you can go to the website of the biomix that by you can find information based of this webinar and you can just by typing your email address you can download your certificates and our next webinar of from the biomix is rightly falls on the 4th october that is next sunday at 11 am as per indian standard time the speaker of the next webinar is dr puyus bandara who is currently working as a uh, research scientist in the department of molecular microbiology and immunology university of missouri at usa and he will be delivering his talk on science of scientific writings and i hope this uh, this talk uh, is uh, totally different uh what we had so far in a bio biomix platform and this science of scientific writings uh, helps for you for all phd scholars and all the research scholars those who are in the field of biology so please stay with the with our biomix team for further updates join with us stay tuned thank you thank you everyone thank you so much sir okay thank you thank you